Hello, party people. Welcome into our Sports First studios. Gabrielle Amato alongside George DiMatellis. Yeah. And we make up... The g g g g unit Yes! Happy Friday from us here at BN Sports to all of you watching. From wherever you're watching, let us know where you're watching from. And on our agenda today, Valverde out, take 589. Yeah, we real. break down Barcelona's exit from the Supercopa. And is a new manager already lined up to take over? from Ernesto Valverde. Mm. We check in with Jamie Easton live in Barcelona. We're going to talk a little bit of Klopp and Mourinho because guess what? They go head-to-head -head this weekend and this is an all-French affair on Sports Burst. Ligue 1 is back with a bang live and exclusively right here on BN Sports where we break down this weekend's matches. All this on Sports Burst. That starts now. So, guys, Valverde out is once again trending on the internet. Mm -hmm, Not yeah. a surprise. We're going to uh, show you guys some of our favorite uh, clips from Twitter and what everyone's saying. Um, but, yeah, so now Atletico Madrid and Real Madrid are headed to the Supercopa final. Neither one of them have actually won a domestic title last season, but yep. they're headed to the final. These are some of those images that we uh, wanted to show you guys. Valverde out. Obviously, Barcelona fans' two Ooh. favorite words at the moment. Um, then there's one that's coming up. That's one of my personal. So Guardiola, possession guys, pressure guys. Uh, the Zidane one says, guys, cross. And the Valverde one just says, guys, do something. Please, make <laughs> oh my it work. Goodness. So who is to blame, George? Because yet again, Barcelona <clears throat> dropped the ball late in the game and are kicked out of a decisive match. Five goals in that second half. It was 0-0 at halftime, and then they lose 3-2. You can blame the defense. You can blame Ernesto Valverde for not organizing the defense well enough. I mean, if Barca scores two goals, they should beat anyone, almost anyone. Right. You can also blame the fact that if you're going to put more on Valverde, you can blame him on the fact that this tournament, they didn't really take it that seriously. Let's be honest. It's a new format outside of Spain, so they weren't focused on that. They're focused on La Liga. They're focused on the Champions League, and then this tournament comes along. They have to play two extra matches. Maybe they just didn't want to be there. They didn't want to play that tournament. And I don't if, know, George. And the thing is, but that's where it goes back to Valverde. Right. He has to be motivating them to say, hey, let's win these games. Let's go out and play these games. Atletico Madrid, they have been playing well. They've mm -hmm. scored like two goals in the last four games in the lead-up to this matchup. But they're still, they still shouldn't be getting three in 45 minutes against right. Barcelona. Right. So a lot, I can understand why the fans are upset with Valverde. But to go that far and say Valverde out, mm, that might be a little too, I think, too premature. Well, all the fans are saying those two words, Valverde out. And the latest rumor is that maybe Xavi Hernandez is lined up to take over this Barcelona oh, oh, oh. job. Now, of course, there's only one man that's going to tell us the truth, and that's Jamie Easton live in Barcelona. So we're going to connect with him. Jamie, hello from Miami to Barcelona. We're putting on our headphones so we can hear you. And um, so let us know. Fact or fiction, Barcelona directors went to Doha to meet with Xavi about the potential Barcelona job. There's a little bit of both, Gabby. Facts and fiction, because there are pictures of uh, the CEO of Barcelona and Eric Abidal, the sports director in Doha, in Qatar. The official version of the club is that they had that journey planned in order to go to visit Usman Dembele, who is recovering in Doha from his injury. But because they went to Qatar to see Dembele, they just took advantage of that trip and they went to see Xavi Hernandez too. So the club doesn't deny that, but they say that that wasn't their first intention. So this doubt in Barcelona right now about what is the real position of the club, because we can hear President Bartomeu and the rest of the board members saying that Valverde will stay, but on the other hand, they visit Qatar, they visit Xavi Hernandez just to know if he would like to take charge of Barcelona next summer not now we have to leave things clear here on being sports valverde will still be barcelona's manager if anything brutal happens for example like napoli just sending them home again do you know who plays in napoli somebody called manolas do you remember manolas mm -hmm. when playing in rome oh! they may have some nightmares with that but mm -hmm. 
Yeah, but returning to that journey, um, Abidal and Oscar Grau, the CEO of Barcelona, admit they met with Xavi Hernández. But we have to remember one thing, Abby. Xavi Hernández publicly announced his support to another presidential candidate in Barcelona called Victor Font, who is the rival of the current Barcelona board. We have to remember that in Barcelona there will be presidential elections in 2021, and their favorite candidate, the one that they do like in the Barcelona offices, especially President Bartomeu, is Ronald Koeman. So we'll see what happens, but what seems for sure right now in Barcelona is that Valverde won't continue next season, whatever happens. Well, and people on Twitter are already speculating. Yeah. Let's say a new manager does step in. Who is the first player that they get rid of? Because Twitter seems to think that it must be Rakitic. Yeah, Rakitic is an option. It is is a real option. It could be an option as well, Arturo Vidal. I don't know if the new manager would get rid of him or if the player would like to leave because of all the situation in Barcelona with the Chilean. But they are talking in Barcelona as well that Barcelona really needs a striker. A striker just to make some competition with Luis Suarez. We have to remember that the Uruguayan has contract until 2021, but he's been offered some interesting things from Miami, I think, from David Beckham. So we'll see how that ends too. But I think that he has another season in Barcelona together with his close friend Leo Messi. But Barcelona has no other attacker, no other striker, no other centre forward than Luis Suarez. And it's been some years with that lack of a substitute for the Uruguayan. And we'll see what happens as well in the right fullback because Sergio Roberto has to play there again another season when we were told that he was a midfielder. So somebody's not convinced about Nelson Semedo being the starter. We'll see what happens next time. It will be interesting. And if Xavi Hernández comes, he will have inside the dressing room those who were his former teammates Busquets, yeah. Piquet, Jordi Alba, Leo Messi. So we'll see what happens with that. Will he have what it has to take to say, okay, mates, goodbye. I don't trust you anymore. We'll right. see. Well, J Jamie, I wanted to ask you. They gave up three goals to Atletico Madrid in the second half of that Spanish Super Cup. And then everybody's talking about they need a striker, they need a forward. It seems to me they need more defensive help. What's, what are you hearing about a uh, possible like, holding midfielder, a replacement for Sergio Busquets possibly, or another center back coming to the Camp Nou? Well, the truth is that talking about Sergio Busquets, when Valverde took him out from the pitch is when Barcelona more suffered, you know. The goals arrived when there was nobody playing Sergio Busquets in that moment. There was a hole in the midfield. And what they are saying in Barcelona right now is that Umtiti is not the level not to play for Barcelona, not to play for the team that is playing just near this neighborhood around here called San Andreu. He just performance was horrible the other day and it's clear that Langlet has to play together with Gerard Piquet and it's clear that Barcelona need to do something with the central defenders. They want to um, send Todibo on loan and we'll see what happens in summer but they really need a new defender and there's one that everybody likes inside the club. He's called Araujo. He's playing for the B team and he has, okay. they say, a brilliant future. Wow. Well, thank you very much for the insight, Jamie Easton. Always a pleasure having you in the show. Get warm. It looks to be getting dark over there. <laughs> Bye, Jamie. Yeah, it's getting darker and darker, so I nearly don't see anything right now. I'll go home and, like, <laughs> putting some lights on. But thanks, yeah. Gabby. It wasn't Bye, pleasure. Jamie. Thanks again. Thank you, Jamie. All righty. So we heard from Jamie Easton. Valverde out. Not quite yet, Barcelona fans. Maybe this summer, uh, mm -hmm. unless something drastic happens like a loss against Napoli, Napoli or right. another uh, dramatic exit from the Champions well, League. Well, let's say they, they, I think they'll get past Napoli, but then they might go out in the quarterfinals. Does that mean he's out Right, the where do they draw the like, line? Like, what's the line? I mean, does, does he have to win Champions League to save his job? Right. Does he have to win La Liga by 17 points again? Like, what's the line that Barcelona fans have in order for Ernesto Valverde to stay on another season. And is Xavi ready to be manager? Right, and that's, that's what a lot of you thing. in the comment section are saying, uh, that you're not too keen on even Xavi coming. Yeah, he was a club legend, but mm -hmm. he hasn't been doing uh, all that great in Qatar during his time yeah. as manager. Um, and so a lot of you uh, a little worried about yeah. even a Xavi Hernandez taking over. Let's move on. Uh, so we knew... 
it's not just Valverde that's trending in in uh, the world as per this game because we knew Juan Felix and Messi would be going head to head in this match. Yep. But we didn't think that Juan Felix and Messi would take it quite so literally <laughs> awesome. going head to head. You like that transition? Oh, yeah, 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 that was good. So um, a lot of you, and I know Joshua Singleton uh, in our comment section, we put your comment up a couple of minutes ago, said, I wonder what they said to each other. And George, this is the game that mm-hmm. we're going to play, and you guys play along with us. What words were exchanged between these two players when they were quite literally head to head, face to face? I have two theories. Okay. I think one was Joao Felix said to Messi, hey, uh, let me get your autograph. Really? Was, and he wasn't having theory. it. No, he wasn't having it. Two, I think Messi went up to Joao Felix and said, hey, man, why, why you did that to my boy Jordi Alba? And, and, and Joao Felix oh, was like, you know what? I don't give a damn about Jordi Alba. He don't play for me. And then they just went back. And then Messi was not satisfied with the answer. It was halftime. The whistle blew. Right. So he walked back to the to the to the locker room. That, those are my two theories. I think that people are reading way too much into it, and I think that there's always been questions as to the exact color of Messi's beard. Is he a ginger? Is it blonde? Is it brunette? Is it black? And so, I mean, it's such an interesting color that I think Sean Felix just wanted to finally give us an answer and say. It's ginger, guys. Messi play. Messi makes millions of dollars. He could color it whatever he wants. Yeah, and he I mean, and he does. Yeah. Um, so a lot of you very. Uh, you can afford all the hair coloring in the, in the world. Giving us very funny answers here. Uh, Sandvar saying Juan said Cristiano says hi, bra. A lot of people on the <laughs> internet said maybe it was a joke about the international trophies that Ronaldo has yeah. two, or that Juan Felix already has one and Messi has zero. Um, but always fun playing this game. Mm-hmm. But anyway. I, I like I like the fact that Joao Felix didn't back down from him. Yeah. And that, and also Talk if you're Bar- confident, yeah. And also if you're a Barcelona fan, you have to like that. A lot of guys after the incident in the penalty area with Joao Felix and Jordi Alba, those Barcelona players ran in and stepped up on their defense on the right. behalf of their their teammate. But then Joao Felix didn't back that back down either. So that was good both sides. I like that. Uh, before we move on, I do want to hit some of your comments because you guys are writing a ton. So um, Michael Greto, Valverde has ruined De Jong, and you kind of spoke about a replacement for Sergi Busquets. And a lot of people yeah. say maybe De Jong can take that more defensive role, but others say that he is so good offensively that yeah. it would be a waste of talent to put him in that defensive role. I don't understand how he's ruined De Jong. Like, De Jong is going to be terrible for the rest of his career? Of course not. De Jong has been excellent. Every time I watch him, he does well going forward. He's still learning. This is his first season. Right. So if he makes at mistakes Barcelona. at Barcelona, he's going to make mistakes. Would you want him to fit in like Xavi or Iniesta? No, give the man some time. He hasn't ruined De Jong. De Jong has been excellent. Everybody talks about they need a number nine. They need someone to, to challenge Suarez. But Jamie mentioned it. When Busquets went out the game, they fell apart. Right. So who's going to be the replacement for Busquets? That's the big question, Barca fans. That's what y'all need to be asking. Instead of Valverde out, you need to be asking Jose Bartomeu, who do we got to replace a uh, Busquets, that's the big question y'all have, y'all need. Chris Shaw is saying, I absolutely love Xavi, but him as our manager, question mark. I definitely don't think he'd be up for it. I would be afraid it would be like Ole is for United. And we see this trend yeah. of ex-legends of a team coming back and being the manager ever since Zinedine Zidane had success with it. But then Not Pep, everyone and, has success with it. And Pep, when he had success right. as the Thierry Barca Henry manager. Henry didn't have success nope. with it. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer short-lived success. Mm -hmm. Mikel Arteta, it's starting off well. We'll see how that one ends. And you just see it time and time again that every major club is now trying this new system. This new system. Yeah, you have to bring interest to your team outside of what they're doing on the pitch. And he's a beloved figure. If I was Xavi, I'd chill. I'd wait a couple seasons, get some seasoning as a manager, learn tactics, learn what it takes, and then get on the bench for Barcelona. A lot of people also coming to De Jong's defense. Brendan Byrne saying De Jong is quality. What is he talking about? Gabriel Pessoa saying apart from the recent red, De Jong has been one of Barcelona's best players. Raul Rodriguez also saying De Jong's been on fire. Thank you. What are people talking about? So we agree. Um, Let's move on. Speaking of what are people talking about, uh, yeah. everyone's talking about Tottenham taking on uh, Liverpool this weekend because Klopp versus Mourinho is just always a classic. And a really interesting moment happened in uh, the press conference. Mm-hmm. So uh, Jurgen Klopp was asked if he was a better player than Jose Mourinho. Oh. Jurgen Klopp then went to think and he said, I actually have no idea what position Jose Mourinho played in. Asked the press room. Nobody knew. He told them to Google it. Do you know what player, what position Jose Mourinho played? Jose Mourinho was a, was about semi-professional, and I think he was a holding midfielder. He was a midfielder! Wow! So you technically know something that Jurgen Klopp doesn't know about soccer. 
Oh, yeah. Jersey Metallus, everyone. And Jürgen what Klopp, a legend. Jurgen Klopp played <laughs> professional as well. He actually played at a higher level than Mourinho, and I think he was first division with Mainz. Yeah. In his career as yeah. well, so yeah. Um, but a very interesting matchup because if Liverpool do walk away with a win, they'll have 61 points in 21 Ooh. matches, wow. which is a record in the European top five leagues. The best ever record after 22 matches. Get them. I, I, I can't see Liverpool dropping three points on this one. Against Tottenham. Against Tottenham, Against the Tottenham yeah. who unfortunately, as we reported yesterday, are without Harry Kane, who will be out yep. until April. No Harry Kane? Oh, no Harry yeah. Kane. yeah they, they, they're in trouble. They're in trouble. No Harry Kane. I'm, I'm not even a Tottenham fan, but I like that name, Harry Kane. I'm just saying, as a Miami alumni, that's a cool name. Gabriel okay, Pessoa saying, George the Encyclopedia. Um, Brendan Burns saying, be careful what you wish for with Valverde out. Guys, we've moved on from Valverde out. And yeah. we're going to move on from England, too, <laughs> because we're going to hop over to Paris because we have a partidazo in Ligue 1, PSG taking on Monaco. Ligue 1 is back with a bang as the League of Talents kicks off 2020 with, like I said, Partidas yeah, in man. store for us all. Let's begin with the mega match of the weekend. That man right there, Kylian Mbappe, will be taking on Monaco. And this Ooh. is an interesting one because I know a lot of you are going to say, okay, PSG are top of the table. Monaco have had an underwhelming season, to put it nicely. Yeah, nicely. This really doesn't matter. But you're wrong because even Thomas Tuchel is worried about these matches because they have a very busy January and February calendar. 13 matches between those two months. And guess what? This is around the time that this man right here got injured last season. Ooh. We all know what PSG's goal for the season is. Mm -hmm. Champions League. The big year trophy. And so yes. every single one of these matches matters. Yeah, it does matter. And remember, Coupe de la Ligue, Coupe de France, they have to rotate these guys. They right. just... Messi... Or, Messi, oh my goodness. Mbappe, Neymar, Icardi just played in the Coupe de France, no, Coupe de la Ligue against uh, Saint-Étienne, Saint 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 the 6-1 uh -huh. game, and they dominated that game. So we'll see how the rotations are instituted here. Does Tuchel risk Neymar here against Monaco, who right. mid-table but still a talented team with a new manager? Does he risk them? Does he risk him with all these other fixtures coming up? Look, let's be honest. They don't need Neymar to beat Monaco. And if they do... They're in big trouble. So you think so, that these players should be rested in a the, match like this? I would rest Neymar. I would. Mbappe is 20 years old. Okay, Mbappe can run all forever. He ain't 40. He's 20. Okay, he could play well, this Neymar game. Neymar isn't and then 40 20, either. Yeah, well, Neymar is, but Neymar is coming off two big injuries too. So true, there's true, that true. aspect of it. But 20 year olds, they could play. He could play football tomorrow and then play basketball the next day. You know what I'm saying? So he'll be all right. But and Neymar, I think you need to rest him. I would play Sarabia. I like Sarabia. I think he's been an excellent addition to the team. Give Neymar the break. Let him rest up and preserve his body for the Champions League and later in the season. Deli Bop with a hilarious point. Neymar's sister's birthday is coming up. Just saying, and we all know what that means. Around Neymar's sister's birthday, there usually is an injury or a suspension or something that he must go you know to Brazil for. Paris is, but the, the club, bring her sister here. Bring them to France. No, Paris she wants is a to party celebrate town. in Brazil. Brazil oh. is party town. Oh, yeah, it is. No, I mean, party I'd rather country. go to Brazil than yeah, Paris exactly, for yeah. party. But still, just one time, you know, just convince him, say, hey, Monsieur Neymar, bring your, your cell to France and Paris. You can have a good time here. We would simulate the carnival for you. Who speaks you know, like this? Uh, nobody. I saw it in the movie. <laughs> but just do it anyway. Bring them to Paris. Have them have a good time in Paris. Bring the sister. Bring the family. You have a good time. If you're rich... You can have fun anywhere. Bob Flakema saying, Neymar's a croissant. Fluffy and fragile, but looks good. Mm. I was going to say something else, but you guys are going to yeah. twist and turn it, so I'm not going to say it. <laughs> Jean Kiel, I would rest both of them, play Cavani and Di Maria, have Mbappe ready in case they are in trouble. Very good point. Di Maria, who's been sensational yeah. also. Vavon Gray, PSG should start a C squad. And I'm going to tell you guys why PSG can't start a C squad, because this Monaco side is now under Robert Moreno, yeah. who not only he has something to prove, but Monaco has something to prove. After a slow start to the season under Leonardo Jardin, who was sacked back in December, Robert Moreno is now in charge of his first league match, this man right here. Mm -hmm. And, um, I mean, he said, a lot of people saying, oh, this is your first uh, job in the hot seat. And he said, no, I've been an assistant for nine years. The only difference is that I haven't been the one in the limelight, but right. that he's done all of the work. Do you think this is going to work? I think it'll going to, it's going to work depending on what Monaco has as its standard. What do they want? Are they just trying to avoid relegation? Are they trying to get to Europa League? Europe. I what's think they're the, trying to get to Europe. And they're not the far off. No. Nah. And they have, look, they have between Slimani and Wissam Ben Yedder. Those two are very good. Wissam Ben Yedder is right up there in terms of Mayor Budel for Ligue 1. 
So they have a good squad. So if Europa League is the intention, then it could be he could be under some fire because he's unproven. This is his right. first job as a manager. So we'll see what happens. But uh, Monaco, they need to get the three points here. And and it is achievable for Monaco to end up in Europa. They're just three three points off from the Europa uh, spots. Europe spots. So right. it's, it is it is. With some vignettes, a possibility, a beast, guys. Uh, we also want to let you guys know that if you haven't been sold on our analysis of PSG versus Monaco, uh, all the celebs go and see PSG, so you should too. Have you seen the celebrities that go to the Parc des Princes? First of all, this is Justin Timberlake wrapping PSG gear. Ugh. Oh, God. The LeBron. king himself. They made up for it. Justin Timberlake is whack, but Jimmy LeBron, Butler blowing Jimmy kisses Butler. with Neymar and Mbappe. Steph. Steph Curry with the shot. Woo! Woo! <laughs> but you know who's the number one? Ka who's Kendall Jenner at uh, the Parc okay. des Princes. See, they lose Gigi points for that. Gigi with her BFF Gigi. What do you mean? Kendall Jenner is just famous because she's... This is she, an international... Because she gets half naked on Instagram. No, That's the only this, reason why she's famous. These, this is an international club. and, and they're, I missing, mean, they're missing the most stylish person. With, Beyonce. I know with Jay Z, we did not get that picture, I, but you I guys. Got a picture. They I, have been, and you know who else? Rihanna at Rih the Parc des Princes. You got George is upset at our selection. Justin Timberlake oh, no. and and Kendall <laughs> Jenner, and you forget to put Beyonce and Rihanna. And Bri Rihanna. So anyway, you guys must tune in uh, PSG versus Monaco this weekend. I'm in exasperated, a man. All right, we're gonna move on. <laughs> well, don't get exasperated because you're uh, hosting a match this afternoon. Yeah. that's another great one. Uh, Ren taking on Marseille. This is second versus third. Um, and it's going to be an exciting one because both teams have mm -hmm. a very similar trajectory. Uh, both were kind of off to a slow start, and in November, they turned it yeah. on. Both unbeaten uh, since November. So it'll be very interesting to see how this one plays Don't out. Don't underestimate Stade René. You have to say it like that because Rene. it's French. René, yes. Because I thought it was Ren. Ren. Well, Ren also. Yeah. The official name is Stade René Football Club, but you have to say, you know, Ren for short. This is a there French edition of Sports Burst. Mais so oui, here oui. we are. It's just Haitian, so il faut parler français. Okay. The, but, so, Ren. But Ren is a very good, first of all, Coupe de France winners. They are the reigning Coupe de France champions. They got to the round of 16 of last season's Europa League. They really, really are really the surprise team. of the season, yeah. too. And, and they grind out results. They're, they've won five in a row. Uh, most of them are 1-0s, 2-1s, so they find a way to win games. Marseille, I know they struggled in the beginning under André Villas-Bosch, but now they seem to be getting it, getting into form. They had that rough game that went to penalty kicks in the Coupe de France against Trélissac. Yes. So that, was, that went to penalty kicks, but they got through that. So this is going to be a very good game. I don't expect it to be... An attractive game. I think when it is it like I said, they grind out results. Well, and so they're they very might defensively sound. Defensively sound. So they might they're gonna test Marseille's attack going forward here. We do wanna let you guys know to keep an eye out for Eduardo Camavinga, born on BN Star, seventeen yep. years old. He just turned seventeen in November and he is a sensational player. All top European clubs are after him, Real Madrid included. Uh funny enough, they even suggested Ren suggested that they wanted 100 mil for him. Don't think they're going to get that. Why not? I think they'll get around 40. Well, right now. 40. Right now. But in two, let's say they continue to progress. Let's say they get into Champions League before I'm willing champions. Jack up that price and make that money, man. But remember this name, Kama Vinga. Before yeah. we move on from League on, we're going to play a little game. Woohoo! I like when we oh, play Oh, yeah. Get ready, guys. And we want you guys to join in. So comment in our uh, comment section below to join in. It's called Griezmann or Cheeseman. Oh. We are going to say names, and it is either a player like Antoine Griezmann or a Cheeseman, a type of cheese. Or, now, these are, as, are, they, as they say in French, fromage. Fromage. Okay, let's go. Mm -hmm. First name, Boutel. I know this is Ludovic Bout Boutel. Boutel. Ludovic Boutel is a player for... I want to say, uh, he's a, no, he's a goalkeeper. So you're saying player? But he's a player, yeah. Okay, I'll go cheese. Oh, it's player. Okay, you're right. goalkeeper for Angers. Oh, all right. So I know okay. he's a player. Good, good, okay, good, good, good. Beaufort. Oh, Beaufort? Beaufort. Yeah, that's cheese. That's Beaufort. a cheese. Beaufort. That's a cheese. I have, I've had it in a um, empanada. Okay, reveal. It is a cheese. George, you, you're too good at this game. Beaufort. Um, Bellegarde. Oh, I just did a game. Bellegarde. Jean, Jean Rickner Bellegarde plays for Stade de Reims. I, just, I did that game, that's why. I knew that one too, or, but or, I don't want to say. Excuse me, Strasbourg. Yeah. Strasbourg plays um, Stade de Reims in the Coupe de la Ligue semi, uh, quarterfinals. Briancon. 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 Briancon is a player. He's a player. I tried to say the, the pronunciation is it, wrong. Yeah. You see when it has that you. little thing on the bottom? You say it like soft. So it's yes, bien son. Yes, yes. Faisal. Yeah. Faisal. You know what this reminds me of? This was my Arabic name when I took classes in the Air Force. Uh, Faisal is a cheese. I think it's a cheese. Do I just spy for 
number five. This is no fun. We have to play it with someone else. Dude, I may look stupid, but I'm smart. <laughs> So great job, George Dimitala. Uh, and I didn't research your it either. Cheese and play yeah. Vincent. Yeah, he really did not know this mm -hmm. before. Um, we want to hop quickly on the transfer train and give you guys the latest transfer talk. So your Inter Milan is very active oh, this window. Dead. So this is the latest. They want Giroud. I'm not oh too God, mad. George okay. isn't excited. Uh, no, no, no. Why, no. Do, why do you want Chelsea's leftovers? Well, that's precisely what it is. Okay. Uh, they want to pick him up from Chelsea from 8 to 10 mil, 2.5 year deal. Yeah. 8 to 10 million for someone who barely plays? For Giroud. That's how much a World Cup trophy gets you? Man. So I'm you gonna... don't want Giroud? No, I don't want him. All right, next Ooh, up. If Erickson. you get him for free. Yeah, Ericsson on a pre contract, um, and that move would be done obviously in the summer, but on a free Ericsson. I like that one. You, you yeah, want I it. would prefer that over Giroud, yeah. And then we have an update on Ashley Young. Well, the update is that there is no update because <laughs> uh, Ashley Young still wants to sign the contract and Inter still want him and he still wants to go. So. Yeah. Okay, good. I'm glad he's coming. Just hurry up and make it happen, man. So we don't awesome. have to talk about it. All righty, we've completely run out of time, but we do want to let you guys know again that League uh, is live and exclusively on BN Sports all weekend long. Uh, catch Georgie Metellus hosting mm -hmm. today at 2.30. Ren taking on Marseille. How I was like my pronunciation? Was Ren, Marseille. Nailed it. And have a fabulous weekend, guys.